LP, what what do you think? Um, me personally, I'm a little worried about when they go live action because Disney be fumbling in the back a lot. Um, they definitely making a comeback right now with this. X Men is definitely holding Disney on his back right now. I think Deadpool is going to hold it on his back when it come out in a couple of weeks. But um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when it goes live action. I really just hope that they just don't fumble it. Um, that's my biggest fear because Marvel, uh, Disney, Disney has made a lot of mistakes with Marvel. So we want them to start, you know, getting back on track. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm a diehard X Men fan, like I said before. X Men are black people. I mean, if anybody want to know why black people love X Men so much, it ain't that hard to figure it the hell out. <laughs> Here we go. You're getting started already. Seven fires. Let's go. Hey, I mean, I mean, everybody know me. Matt, Magneto is Martin. I mean, Magneto is Malcolm X. Professor Xavier is Martin Luther King. They fighting for rights. You know, mutants get treated a certain way because they got powers, even though. Spider Man got powers, Avengers, all them got powers, and nobody gives them any hell whatsoever. But when we born with powers, we get treated bad. So we 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 have we have we have a different connection. I personally feel to X Men than some people, um, because we see things like if a person ever wants to say, "I don't understand racism," I'll be like, "Okay, watch watch X Men," and then you <laughs> you'll understand it after that. <coughs> so. I think I think that I think Ryan Cooler will be a good uh, person to put on it. I think a black director would be better um, to kind of really get that feel. Um, but I don't know. I'm I, I'm I'm over excited because I mean the Avengers are cool. Oh, we're losing. I had yeah, I, I, I agree with you uh, on that LP. I think that. The dynamic of having someone who understands uh, struggle, trouble, and sacrifice will be good to to direct this. And I think from the eyes of Ryan Coogler, I think that he can really bring a different aspect that people aren't really expecting. And then bring an aspect that people would like to see uh, for the X-Men. Because not only do you have to bring these characters to life, but you also have to bring some complexities to the characters, right? And I think within the writing and the, the cartoon, um, they've been able to do that. But you, you have to have some type of director or writers that understand uh, what it's like to feel like a mutant. And I think we all, we're black men. We know what it feels like to be talented and have all these gifts and abilities and people still looking at you like you uh, a spider. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you can you can have all these talents and abilities and gifts and 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 people still look at you a certain type of way, and I think that a lot of the mutants, uh, no matter what skin color or what race or what alien race they come from, I think that they all have that uh, that underlying thing that they all realize that they're they're mutants and how their parents react to them being mutants and um, how society reacts to once they find out that a mutant is close by. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it draws parallels to real life. And I think that you have to have a director that understands that to be able to bring that dynamic to it so that it is deeper than just a superhero movie. How do you think the, the audience is going to be able to react to <clears throat> that dynamic um, once they actually really see it? You know, we see it from a standpoint from being black men, but other races and other cultures actually realizing that that's the dynamic of what's this um this animated series, this cartoon is actually portraying. Like how you think they're going to respond? You think they will go go positively or you know do like they always do and just go negative too? I think you're gonna have a mixture of both. Um, you're going to have people that really love it. And then you're going to have people that are going to criticize it for being quote unquote woke, <laughs> which, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think woke has taken on a whole new term than it has before. And, um, I think that a lot of people are going to say, you know, it's, it's too, um, 
woke, I guess woke is the word that you say. It's too woke. It's, it's too liberal. It's too whatever the case may be. So you're going to get both ends of the spectrum where people are praising it and people are hating that, hating it at the same time uh, because of what it represents and what it's representing. You know what I'm saying? So I think you're going to get both praise and hate at the same time. But ultimately, if they make a good movie, if, if they make it undeniable, then, you know, I think that it'll do really well in the box office and then it'll continue to ride a wave, uh, introducing a new wave of X-Men movies in the franchise for Marvel. Gotcha. LP, real quick, I got a quick question for you. Who do you see being the next big villain between what we've seen with Disney and what we've seen with Marvel? Who do you think they're actually going to select as the next big, big, big villain for the, uh, I guess, the entire Avenger, Marvel, X-Men uh, community to be able to battle against? Um. Well, when it comes to X-Men, Apocalypse is normally the biggest of the bad. So eventually Apocalypse has to be that guy. Um, I always feel like they shouldn't jump to Apocalypse so fast because he's such a big character. He's kind of like a, he's like a Thanos where you just shouldn't jump to him just because. Um, but I think they're going to try to hit the ground running with X-Men and they're not going to try to draw a whole lot of stuff out. Just like with the Fantastic Four, they already got Galactus already. They already said Galactus is in it and it's the first movie. So yes. I don't know how the hell you have Galactus in, on the first movie. When you know, I, I don't. I just. I think certain characters, certain certain villains need a build up. Um, just like if you do a, you know, when you when you bring Batman back, the Joker shouldn't be the first villain. Um, of course, you know they're gonna get to the Joker, but he shouldn't be the first villain. So I think with people who like like us who have been watching it for years, you want to see something different. But I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's gonna be Apocalypse or maybe Mister Sinister. I think they can start off with a Mr. Sinister in a, in a, in a live action and build up to Apocalypse. I think that's the best route for them to do. Um, there's a lot of, just like Deadpool has Cassandra Nova. A lot of people, unless you know comics, you have no idea who the hell Cassandra Nova is. But people will know her when Deadpool comes out. I mean, I know who she is, but the average person don't know who it is. But everybody knows who Apocalypse is. A lot of people know Mr. Sinister, but not like that. But Everybody know who Apocalypse is. So, then, <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. And, and then, and I can't believe that we're really overlooking Doctor Doom right now in terms of being able to come out as one of the very first villains. Uh, I think they did hint to it a little bit in in some of the things that we have going on in terms of like the Fantastic Four um, and uh, what was it, the Captain Marvel? No, uh, uh, Doctor Strange. Um, with the multiverse, you know, thing they did hint to Doctor Doom a little bit, um, but they, do you really foresee? And I'm gonna go with Chef, uh, Chef Showtime if we can hear him. If he's out the water, you out the water there, Chef? Yeah, I was drowning for a little bit. All right, all right. So he, he's back again. Um, one thing that DC has done that Marvel has not done yet is feature do a feature of a backstory. For the villain, you know, they did a backstory for the villain in terms of uh, Joker, which was totally different from what we're used to seeing in terms of how the Joker is portrayed. But here we are. Do you kind of see that happening with Marvel anytime soon? Where they're giving a backstory for the villains versus going with the storyline for how the uh, the heroes became the heroes? I think they should. Uh, that make that make it more interesting for everybody else. You know what I mean? Because everybody know who the heroes is. They don't, nobody know why the villain became the villain. Mm -hmm. Magneto Man, Man, should have had his own movie a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it kind of plays into, uh, as you would say, it kind of plays into uh, uh, Scarlet Witch and, and, um, and what's <laughs> uh, Quicksilver. You know, it kind of mm -hmm. plays into how their backstory came, in, came into play and how everything in terms of like Red Skull um, who, who, um, you know, he's part of the, the German, um, uh, what was the thing that happened? Uh, the, the, the genocide, you know, the, the big German genocide. You're talking about the, the, you're talking about Magneto? 
Yeah, you know, Magneto, he, he, his, his back story was... The Jewish... Uh, the Holocaust. The Jewish, the Holocaust. Holocaust. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, Red Skull was, was involved in that as well. 